Okay, today on the bench is the Bounty Hunter um, Pioneer EX. Um, this is my uh, metal detector that my uh, stepdaughter had to have, had to have. Finally bought it for for Christmas. Then, like three years later, she was selling it at a garage sale for twenty dollars. So I bought it, and I've been using it for some metal detecting, off and on. It's not a fantastic one, but it uh, seems to find metal okay. Um, the biggest problem with it is it doesn't have a headphone jack, and I kind of wish it had a headphone jack. So today I'm gonna um, add a headphone jack to it. Uh, the way I figured out you get into this thing is you pry up this plastic here and then there's some screws in underneath there. And those come out, one on each side. And be a little careful on this one over here because the on off switch is there. those two guys out. There's also a couple screws on the back here to take out and this lets the, uh, the connector to the coil um, pop loose if I can get these out. Ugh. all the screws that kind of comes out and then bust apart into two pieces and then you can shove the little connector back inside the battery cover off just to make sure the battery clips will go down to their little slots and the whole thing should just kind of come apart the battery clips the only thing that stays in there is the speaker and it is hot glued in there. So where I'm looking at putting the uh, headphone jack and the, and I'm going to do a volume knob too for the headphones, is uh, right over on this side. Um, if I can fit it in there. Bought a little audio taper uh, potentiometer. This turns, and, uh, and just, since we're working with audio, it's probably important to buy the audio taper ones versus the linear ones. But I mean, the linear one would still work. It would just the audio taper ones are kind of have a logarithmic scale, so they work a little better for audio. Whereas the linear ones are, of course, linear, so as the name would imply. So I have that with its nut and washer and then I also have a uh, a little um, 3.5 or 8th inch audio jack and it's important to note that this has um, two switches built into it that are normally closed and then when you put a headphone jack into it a headphone plug a headphone into it they open up so this allows me to run my audio through the switch and to the speaker so when I don't have a headphone plugged in um, the speaker works and when I do have a headphone plugged in um, the speaker is off and the headphones are functioning I also have a little little gray knob for the uh, for the potentiometer So let's get started trying to fit this all in here. So I don't have a lot of space because the PC board is just kind of right where I right where I need things to be.
got a pilot hole so I know where I'm drilling. And then this is a this is a uh, Forsner bit, which I'm going to use to counterbore this. So what that's done is that sunk it down in there. Now I can drill my quarter inch hole. And then, Pazow. That'll fit right in there with the nut. Flush. The top of the thing. I think it should spread right in there. Come on, baby. So that gets my uh, headphone jack in there. And the board still fits in. It's upside down. Oh, that's right tied up. And yeah, the board still fits in. Good to go there. And I'll just put the volume control on the side. Now you could do this without the volume control, but I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit noisy if I do that. I'll just do it on this side. This one I don't need so much counterbore, I'm just kind of doing that to get it flat. So it's more to get it flat than anything.
the old speaker wires coming out of the board. I extended them to the potentiometer. So the black went to to one side of the potentiometer and the white went to the other side of the potentiometer and then I took the center of the potentiometer and the and the black side of the potentiometer and I went to um, black to the shield of the headphone jack and and also to the black wire from the speaker and then I took the center of the potentiometer and it's split into two wires now, a red and a black so left and right basically but we're it's the same signal we're just splitting it into left and right so you get signal on both headphones and I took those into the left and right jacks and I made sure that those were the jacks that are active when the headphones are plugged in and not the switch side and then the white side from the speaker goes to both switch sides so I just have them jumpered there so the speaker will be mono and your headphones will be stereo and I think she's ready to go um, ready for a test got to find some uh, some nine holders I'm not sure this 9 volts any good. And we can't turn it on because I don't have any switch installed. She's on. No headphones are plugged in. You can hear the speaker going. I don't have the coil in there, but you can hear it beeping a little bit. Headphones are in. And I have audio. Well, half audio. The dog chewed my headphones. And then I can uh, turn it down. Don't hear anything out the speaker. Turn it up. So, looking good. Check. Bazingo. Okay, strictly speaking. The volume control is not really necessary. Um, you know, if you had a, head, a pair of headsets with the volume control on them, you wouldn't need to do that. You could just wire the speaker straight to the uh, headphone jack. Um, but that's about it. Away she goes. Let's put her to use next. And the added feature is I can turn down the uh, volume of the speaker. There we go. That's a check. <laughs>